everybody. Good morning. Uh, Brother Stanley's not with us this morning. Um, I want to thank my mama for letting us uh, have service and, and do Facebook Live from her house up here in Dallas, Georgia. And um, I want to just sing and, and do a devotion this morning and uh, just give you what the Lord has impressed upon me. So just join in, grab your Bible, and get a place that you can be comfortable to, to worship with us this morning. I do want to mention Sister Valerie came through her surgery well, and um, we appreciate your prayers. Uh, everything seems to have gone smoothly. And um, we had a request this morning, Sister Debbie Cruchon uh, sent a message to us that a lady in their church lost her mother. I believe her name is Crystal. So please be in prayer for her and that family. I'd like for you to continue to remember my Aunt Betty. Um, she has COVID, I mentioned on yesterday, and uh, they've had to, to put oxygen on, um, I guess, last night. And uh, so we appreciate your prayers for her. Just join in with us this morning. Father, we thank you for this day. Thank you for all that you've done for us. Pray that you bless and use us in a special way this morning. Help us to minister to someone. Know that you'll meet these needs, Lord. We just praise you and thank you in advance and worship with you. In Jesus' name. Thank you. 
on yesterday, we uh, talked from the book of Psalms, chapter 111, and I mentioned uh, the similarities, how uh, both of those uh, chapters in the book of Psalms are uh, considered acrostics, and how uh, they they lead each line, 22 lines, each leading with a successive letter of the Hebrew alphabet. Um, and so I want to talk about Psalms 112 today. Uh, both of those chapters are 10 verses in length. Um, they have um, identical stanzas. There are phrases uh, that are in both or, or similar. Uh, to both, and um, so we just want to go through and explore uh, this chapter, Psalms 112, if you want to turn in your Bibles with me this morning, I just want to go through it um, a verse or, or two at a time, and uh, walk through and see what we can glean from this chapter, I, I find it to be very rich as far as instruction, or uh, discovering the blessings of God, upon the man who fears the Lord, the man or woman uh, that fears the Lord and desires to walk with him. Uh, it begins just like chapter 111 with a proclamation of praise. It says, praise ye the Lord at the opening of verse 1 of chapter 111. And if you look at verse 1 of chapter 112, it begins the same way. Praise ye the Lord. In other words, uh, it, it's saying hallelujah from the individual uh, that wrote this. Uh, it says author unknown in my Bible. Uh, but it's also kind of a, a uh, encouragement to others to praise ye. Praise ye the Lord, hallelujah, for he is good. Amen. So let's go on with that first verse there. Praise ye the Lord. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord, that delighteth greatly in his commandments. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord. Those, those two chapters both uh, have an instruction there or, or have, actually it's a statement of uh, uh, description or, or declaration about the man that fears God. Um, both of them um, ended with the idea that, well, the end of chapter 11 going into chapter 12, we see in that first verse, uh, the idea that the fear of God, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And now uh, the writer here of this psalm explains the blessedness of the one who does fear God. Uh, the fear that the Bible's talking about right here, it's, it's best described not as a, a, uh, a timid, cowering, uh, frightful, but it's a awesome reverence to God. It's, it's a holy respect that we stand in awe of him. And because of his goodness, because of his uh, omniscience, his um, omnipotence, his almighty power, uh, and the greatness of him, we should stand in awe and respect. We should um, revere him so much that we desire to do his commandments because we understand the consequences of not doing them. That there's a, a, a deliberate echo from the end of that uh, chapter 111 to the beginning here in, in uh, 112. There's a delight in God's word, a delight in God's works of who he is in 111. And then 112, we are told that uh, people delight in God's word. And so... Uh, there is a blessing on the life of in the, in the individual who desires to serve God. Uh, to, to the man that 
that desires to know more about God, to, to uh, seek out his word in the Bible. Uh, his word, it, it's fascinating. It's fascinating to me when, when I begin to, to read of, of all of the mighty acts of God and, and the historical accounts of how he's intervened and, and uh, been so present in the life of his people. Um, it lets me know that it's, a, it's not only a, a historical account, it's not only a, a book of promises, but it's, it's a book of action, and it, it gives me an understanding of its principles that I can apply to my, my own life in a very practical way, and how I live, and, and uh, you know, how I carry out my day-to-day -day activities. And, and so we can see here that there, there is a will of God for us to follow after him. There's a call of God on the life of the believer uh, to follow after his precepts, after his commands. The man who fears God, the man who, who duly respects and honors God, is delivered from other fears by the, the promises that we can stand upon, by, by the power of his strength that's been displayed that we can, that we can look to. But if we delight in his commandments, then it separates us from the fear of other things, outside things that, that might come against us. It frees us uh, from, from uh, a desire to do worldly things. It helps us to align our priorities personally so that we place God primary in our life, that we pre place him preeminent and first in our life. And then if we do that, then our priorities should be in order as according to his will. Adam Clark uh, made this statement, It is not enough to fear God. We must also love him. Fear will deter us from evil. But love will lead us to obedience. Uh, there's, there's a difference in, in doing something uh, because you feel coerced to do it or you feel fearful, uh, you know, but if you do it out of love, if you do it out of devotion, if you do it out of uh, a, a sense of, of consecration uh, unto God, uh, your motivation, your means, uh, your your stimulus for, for doing so, it begins to change faces. The nature of that becomes one of delight, not one of drudgery, not one of, of uh, you know, that just because you have to, you do it because you want to. If we look back, we can, you know, in, in our knowledge of the New Testament, as reflected here in the Old Testament in the Psalms. And we can think of the, the, the great uh, blessedness upon Jesus from God the Father. No one re revered God the Father any more than Jesus did. Um, he, he prayed, not thy will, uh, but not my will, but thy will be done in the face of death when he knew what was coming for him. Uh, he wanted to... to Please the Father. Uh, no one delighted in the Father's commandments as much as Jesus did. He is our ultimate example of what it means to follow after the precepts of God and to reap the benefits of doing so. Let's go on down to verse, verses 2 and 3. His seed shall be mighty upon the earth. Talking about the man that trusteth in God. His seed shall be mighty upon the earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. Wealth and riches shall be in his house, and his righteousness endureth forever. In other words, his, his seed are his descendants. Um, your children, your grandchildren, those that come after you. Uh, the, the Lord will bless and put favor upon you and your family if you trust in him, if you follow and structure uh, the way that, that you lead your household, the way that you guide your children, the way that uh, you uh, live and is an example in front of them. Um, I try to tell my children, and, and I've, I've said it probably on Facebook Live before, I say it in Sunday school, but I tell my children, 
the things that you do, the things that you say have an outcome. There's going to be a result. And whether it's good or whether it's bad, there are consequences to what we do and what we say. And so we have to own that. We have to be responsible for our actions and our words. And we have to uh, take ownership for the outcome. And whether it's good or whether it's bad, uh, it's wholly dependent upon the choices that we make. How we lead our families, how we uh, instruct our children, how we manage our household, all that plays in. His seed, his descendants, shall be mighty upon the earth. The one who fears the Lord and delights greatly in his commandments has blessings upon his family. Uh, the psalmist tells us here, the blessings on the descendants of this man, the man who follows after God, the one is upright. Uh, he shall receive blessings. And then the word mighty, mighty here, uh, means being of recognized stature rather than being physically strong or, or talking about phys physical height or, or structure. Uh, it's talking about spiritual uh, might. It's talking about spiritual standing, uh, being mighty in stature. I found this quote in Spurgeon, If anyone should desire to leave behind him a flourishing prosperity, posterity. Let him not think to accomplish it by accumulating heaps of gold and silver, leaving them behind, but by rightly recognizing God and serving him and commending his children to the guardianship and protection of God. I, I want my children to be successful in life. I want them to, you know, do something to, to live up to their potential, but more than anything, I want them to know a relationship with God. I want them to, to know uh, the power there is in serving Him, the strength that comes with serving God that will help you through this life, and uh, the, the relationship with Jesus Christ should be foremost in their life. That's my goal. I feel like if, if I've really uh, been able to deliver that message to them, and they can grasp hold of it. I'm not talking about just hear it, but I'm talking about incorporate it into their lives. I feel like I've done uh, what I should do as a father. Wealth and riches shall be in his house. Here the author of the Psalms talking about a blessing upon uh, the economic life of the one who serves the Lord. Uh, their life of obedience and, and honor to God uh, means blessings. And if we honor God and we're honest in our dealings financially, uh, the Lord will honor us. Uh, if we try to gain uh, things monetarily or we, we uh, do it by deceit or by fraud or by theft, God doesn't honor that. That's a breaking of his commandments. It's a breaking of uh, his ideal way for us to live. But if we do things honestly, and if we do things uprightly, the Lord will bless us in turn. It, it, it may indicate here uh, that it's just talking about a material blessing, but I venture to, to go even further to say uh, there's a, a moral and a, a spiritual application here uh, that that this can be applied to as well. If, if we hold the Lord dear in, in all of our dealings, then he will honor us. This principle here, it's, it's also understood, uh, you know, while in its literal sense, but there's a, uh, you know, an understanding of the old covenant to the Jews, but it's also uh, understood for the people of God. Uh, if you look across the globe, I'm not just talking about Western understanding of Christianity, but if you look across the globe, many, many of the people of God are poor. Uh, many of the people of God are not of, of great wealth and, and of great uh, means, but uh, as far as money is talking. But, if, but I've found it to be true. I've found it to be um, 
you know, according to God's plan, that if we follow after him in, in a, a manner of stewardship, in a manner of rightly handling our money, and being honest in what we do, then the Lord will bless. Uh, I don't call myself rich by any means. Uh, it's hard to raise four children and be rich. But uh, nevertheless, um, the Lord blesses. Uh, we haven't gone uh, needy. Uh, we, we've had needs in our lives, and the Lord's met them. Uh, so being faithful to the Lord uh, proves true. And then sometimes uh, we see, I, I, I had a, uh, I read a commentary there, the, the guy's name is Horn. I don't know a whole lot about him, but he said, It sometimes pleaseth Lord God to bestow on his servants, as he did on Israel of old, the good things of the world. And a rich man is therefore happier than a poor man because it is more blessed to give than to receive. Right. If we understand uh, the definition of richness to be riches in the blessings of God, uh, then uh, we look at that richness with a totally different perspective. But the Lord knows who can handle uh, his money and who's going to squander it, who's going to waste it, or who's going to invest it uh, to build the kingdom, who's going to use it wisely. And go on down. His righteousness endureth forever. Uh, this righteous man, this man that's following after God, uh, this blessed man's good works and right standing with God are lasting. It says endureth forever. Uh, his, his ways of following after God will not fade in this world or in the world to come. Adam Clark, had a, he had an interesting idea of the word righteousness there, uh, here and in verse 9, uh, and he ties that into uh, the financial blessings of God and, and to uh, the spiritual blessings of God. He said in verse 9, it reverts, refers to the generous giving of the man who fears the Lord. Uh, he stated that both uh, the Hebrew and the Greek words normally translated righteousness um, often are used to signify not only justice and righteousness, but also beneficence and almsgiving. And, and he said this is probably the meaning here uh, in this scripture, reflective of, of the previous portion of that verse. Um, what God blesses us with, we have a responsibility uh, to sow into the kingdom. Uh, he blesses... He's only asking for 10%, but we should understand uh, the principles of the New Testament. God's bestowing upon us uh, the blessings of, of life, of, of health, of a job. If, if we're able to, to earn an income, truly because of, of his goodness to us, 100% belongs to him. We're responsible, or we are to be responsible in how we use that. Let's go on down to verses 4 through 8. Unto the upright man here ariseth the light in darkness. He is gracious, full of compassion, and righteous. A good man showeth favor, and lendeth. He will guide his affairs with discretion. Surely he will not be moved forever. The righteous shall be in everlasting remembrance. He shall not be afraid of evil tidings. His heart is fixed, trusting in the Lord. His heart is established. He shall not be afraid until he see his desire upon his enemies. In that first verse there, unto the upright there ariseth light and darkness. Uh, the psalmist here, he recognized the darkness that, that is all around us in this world. The, the evil acts of sin that are present in this world are are around us, but the one who walks upright with God, the one who fears with God, the one who doesn't partake in the sin of this world and, and adheres to God's commandments, that one who fears God will be blessed in the midst of all of the darkness of the world. That one can walk uh, holding hand in hand uh, 
the promises of God, knowing that if he walks after the Lord, the Lord will, will separate and protect him from the evils all around. God himself, this is a, a quote from, I, I can't pronounce this guy's name, Delitz. That sounds like a German name. God himself is the light which arises in darkness for those who are, who are sincere in his dealings with him. Uh, the relationship of, of God and, and a godly person, the one who seeks after the Lord, is like a relationship of, of the sun to the moon. The sun burns with its own uh, brightness, and, but the moon, the light of the moon, is a reflection of, of the light of the sun. It, it, that's how uh, the moon is able to shine. The moon doesn't shine upon itself, but it shines by reflecting that light that comes to it. You see, while, while we're here on this earth, there's, there's different types of darkness that we encounter. There are trials of life. There's, there's uh, I mentioned the, the sin of the world, but there's, there's darkness of sorrows. There's there's darkness of hardship and, and of death that we encounter, but we can place our trust and our, our promises in him. Uh, the psalmist gives a, a realistic picture here of wisdom as it, it brings out not only the blessings of, of honoring God and the blessings of honor upon the life of the man that trusts God, and but also upon his children and his his financial welfare, but also uh, in the midst and in the face of adversity. It goes on to say he is gracious and full of compassion and righteous. The light that we receive from the word of God, the, the indwelling presence of the Holy Ghost in our life, uh, the spirit of God, that, that should shine out through the life of the individual uh, that walks with him. It should uh, be evident to the people that we come in contact with. And, and the Lord will shine through us as an example uh, to others, an example of, of his grace, an example of his compassion, his righteousness, and, and of his generosity. Uh, we should exhibit those characteristics of Christ-likeness. Verse 3, it, it again refers to uh, God's blessings of prosperity that, that often come to those who, who fear and respect the Lord. Uh, the author deals uh, realistically here with temptations that go with the possession of money. Uh, the, the temptation to abuse power or uh, to um, refuse to, to use it judiciously for, for ministry efforts, for the building of the kingdom of God. Uh, a lot of times people have disagreements over money or, or begin fighting over money. Um, there's a temptation to lack generosity. That's not according to the Lord's plan. He, the Bible tells us that he loveth a cheerful giver. And it goes on in that scripture to say, in lens. If we follow after the precepts of the Lord, financial principles, uh, we can find ourselves in a situation where we have uh, much more freedom in life. Uh, financial Binding or, or, or financial hardship uh, can put such pressure on individuals, can put pressure on, on uh, couples. A lot of divorces occur over financial difficulties. Uh, people commit suicide over financial losses and debt and financial pressures. But if we walk according to his precepts, it's, we, we look at the Bible and we see its instruction and we see its commands. But if we understand it as a roadmap for our life, that if we follow after what the word of God says, then many times we don't have to reap the consequences of, of bad decisions. We don't have to, to reap uh, the, the pit of, 
of, of pressures binding us if we just follow after the principles set forth in God uh, and God's word. He will guide his affairs with discretion. The one who fears the Lord and seeks after the Lord is blessed with wisdom. Uh, that wisdom will flow from a, a godly character and a desire and a willingness to please the Lord. And it says with discretion. Uh, the one who follows after God uses judgment, uses wise judgment, uses discretion in how to manage their affairs. Uh, it, and I'll go as far as say it's not just our our money, it's our time, it's our strength, it's our effort, it's our energy. We have to use discretion. We have to be careful in what we do and, and not waste it away foolishly or, or withhold uncharitably. He will never be shaken. Because of his character and, and wisdom, uh, that's bestowed on the individual that seeks after the Lord, who, who studies to know how to guide his life according to the word because of the character that's developed in that individual. The one who fears the Lord can be firmly established. His remembrance, his remembrance will last. Nothing to fear. We, we don't have to be offset easily by by bad news or, or the works of evil around us, if we trust in God, mm -hmm. then our heart can be so established that we'll see victory through uh, the, the trials of life. We'll see victory over any enemies that may come at us if we stand firmly and established in God's word. This is, it's not something that, that, um, the development of character, it's, it's not something that, that just happens upon us without putting forth um, some active focus and, and uh, concerning, uh, concerted involvement on our part. Uh, we have to avail ourselves. We have to seek after the Word of God and apply it to ourselves. And if we do that, then our receptiveness to the move of God within us and our understanding of, of the Word of God will allow that to mold us, to build our character, uh, to build who we are and to make us more Christ-like. But it takes a desire on our part. It takes a, a, a deliberate seeking after God for that to happen within us. I found this quote, he who builds his transient life, in other words, the brief life that we have as a man here on earth, he who builds his transient life on and into the rock of ages wins rock-like steadfastness, life, lives rooted in God and never uprooted. And then the scripture goes on, uh, it's talking about an everlasting remembrance uh, the righteous are worth remembering. The actions of, of the godly individual are the kind which record themselves. And, and God takes notice of, of that. God uh, takes notice of, of how we live our lives. I, I look back at, I, I was raised through my teenage years at, at Riverside Holiness Church. And I, I mentioned so often. What an impression that so many of the elders that have gone on from Riverside, uh, what an impression they made upon my life. Uh, I remember my grandma and my grandpa, uh, they lived godly lives. They feared the Lord and walked after uh, the teachings of God, walked after uh, the precepts, the word of God. And their remembrance uh, to me is very fond. I, you know, at the end of this life, I want to be remembered for one that, that was genuine. I want to be remembered as one who walked before the Lord. I don't want to be one who, who somebody looks back and, and thinks about, oh, that was a bad individual. He was crooked in his dealings, and he, he 
uh, you know, he lied everywhere he went. I don't want to be remembered as, as one uh, who, who behaves that way or does those things. I want to be remembered uh, as one who walked with God. He will not be afraid of evil tidings. I mentioned the evils around us. Everywhere we look, uh, we come in contact with it from day to day. It, it may come to us and, uh, you know, through our family. It may come to us through, through our, our health, uh, through business or on the job. Um, you know, from the culture around us or even from our government. Uh, from what laws uh, that are passed in contradiction to the word of God. But the one who fears the Lord will not be afraid. Our hope, our hope's eternal. Our hope is in Him. Wow. Praise God. It's not in the future things of this world, but in the secure hand of our God. That's enough to get excited about. That if we walk with Him, if we if we live according to His Word, that we'll reap the blessings of of not only in this life, but a secure reward on the other side. There cannot be evil tidings to the soul which has fixed its trust in the Lord. If tidings were to come to you today of disease, loss, bereavement, death, they could not be evil if your heart dares to maintain a fixed trust in God. For such trust, hallelujah, such trust robs death of its sting and the grave of its victory. I cannot understand, but I can trust him. I don't have to understand everything. I, I, I can't see uh, into the, the next few minutes, but God can. I, I may not understand all that I have to go through or the circumstances of this life, but I'll trust in him and hold on to him. He'll carry me through. His heart is established. I'll try to quickly... Uh, get to the end here. His heart is established. His heart, our heart can be propped up, so to speak, or, or held up, supported by the strength of our maker. Spurgeon quote, uh, wrote this quote, He is neither fickle nor cowardly. When he is undecided as to his course, he is still fixed in heart. He may change his plan, but not the purpose of his soul. Down on to verses 9 and 10, the grief of the wicked. He hath dispersed, he hath given to the poor, his righteousness endureth forever. His horn shall be exalted with honor. The wicked shall see it and be grieved. He shall gnash with his teeth and melt away. The desire of the wicked shall perish. Uh, that little phrase there, he is dispersed. Uh, the psalm has a lot to say about generosity and the one who fears God. Uh, since he is blessed, as, as it uh, stated up in verse 3, it's important that we as people of God be generous with his blessings. But we have to be wise. Uh, the scripture talked about using discretion. Uh, it, it implies a, a wise and a thoughtful uh, distri uh, distribution or, or a use of what we have, uh, using discretion to guide all of our affairs. Paul quoted in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 9, he encouraged Christians to be generous. As it is written, he hath dispersed abroad, he hath given to the poor, his righteousness remaineth forever. And that's not to say we we give indiscriminately. That's not to say we just toss uh, money around at random, but it's to be dispersed like a, like a precious seed with, with discretion, with, with prudence that, that we uh, are generous in a direction according to the nature of the soil of where we put it uh, so that in proper season it, it'll produce a plentiful harvest for the kingdom of God. His righteousness endureth forever. Uh, the profile that we see here of, of the man or the woman that follows after God, who fears 
the Lord. It's a, it's, it's a remarkable uh, one that, you know, if you go through each of these scriptures to tell about the hand of God upon that individual, uh, the hand of God that, that such an individual would reflect the character of God, would, would have a Christ-like attitude, a Christ-like demeanor, uh, using that example again of, of the sun and the moon that, that we as, as children of God will reflect the light of God himself, of the sun, Jesus Christ, shining through our lives. There's some things that we can draw. I wrote a, a short list of, of things that, that we can draw from uh, these scriptures here. The righteous man he is a God-fearing man, one who fears the Lord. He is a lover of God's word and delights greatly in following the commands of God. He's a man of stewardship with his money, of his time, of his energy, of all that he's blessed with. He is a man that makes a home for his family. He is a loving man and kind. Uh, the scripture says gracious and full of compassion. He is a helping man, dealing graciously with others, having a giving heart. He is a wise man, guiding all of his affairs with discretion. He is a strong man, standing firm upon God's word and not being swayed by the evil around us. He's a generous man, sowing into the works of the kingdom. He is a man that doesn't abuse his power. The Bible says uh, that he will be exalted. His horn will be exalted with honor. And lastly, if we stand for God, the world won't like us. If we stand for the principles of God's word, we're going to encounter some conflict with the world around us. So I wrote, he is a hated man. The wicked will see it and be grieved. Wise living, wise living can reap successes in life. Wise living, unlike, uh, you know, Many human endeavors that, that may fail and, and be short-lived, if we build our life around the principles of God's Word, we'll reap His blessings here and in eternity. His horn shall be exalted with honor. His power and authority shall be exalted with honor. He shall rise to influence only through His own worth, not by dishonesty, not by extortion, not by fraud, not by deception or flattery, but by following after godly principles. The wicked see it and be grieved. In contrast to, to the enduring blessings of God upon the righteous man, the wicked man, it says it in the scripture, will melt away. His misery will be all the worse as his desire is frustrated and he sees the blessings that come to those who fear God. He, he can look upon the man who walks with God and see how different it is than his own life. And I'll end with this. Uh, Charles Spurgeon wrote this quote that I think sums up uh, this whole chapter here. He said, when all the flashes of sensual pleasure are quite extinct, when all the flowers of secular glory are withered away, when all earthly treasures are buried in darkness, when this world and all the fashion of it are utterly vanished and gone, the bountiful man's state will be, will be still firm and flourishing, and his righteousness shall endure forever. Amen. It'll serve us well to follow after God. Uh, we'll reap the consequences in a positive way if we make wise choices. He's, he's not failed me. He's been faithful to me. I'm thankful that I can walk with him, that I can trust in him. Amen. <laughs>
Lord. Let not your heart be troubled, but place your trust in him. Amen.